Hello everyone. Welcome to another video lesson in Accountancy Business and Management 2. Okay, so we will be discussing a new lesson today. It is about the analysis and interpretation of financial statements. And we will be using the vertical and horizontal analysis. Okay. Then we have here, okay, the financial statement analysis. Why do we have to do a financial statement analysis? Is it not enough that we have been preparing already the four financial statements in our previous lessons? Yes, it is not enough. Why? Because when a manager takes hold of a financial statement and tries to read them, not all questions can be easily answered by these figures. We need to do some computational activity and analysis to be able to answer some of the questions like what is the growth in asset, the growth in income, the growth in profit. And when you compare it from the previous year to the current year, okay, then some questions may arise like uh, what is the financing mix of the, of the assets or meaning is the asset financed solely by the investors or is there a combination of financing coming from the creditors and coming from the investors and how much percentage is coming from the investors and how much is coming from the creditors okay so we, we will also be answering some questions like is the change was there a change from the previous to the current year in terms of growth in terms of increase, decrease, or no movement at all. Okay, so when we find out, when we are able to answer these questions, people, people can now make good economic decisions. And who are these people using this financial statement analysis? They are the owner themselves, the owners, because they could make sound judgment in their management, then we also have the creditors. In case they would want to borrow money to the bank, they would want to, these banks would surely want to see their financial statements first and make an analysis and interpretation of the financial data. Then we also have the government. The government may also be interested in your financial stability, in your financial health. Then we have the public. Especially when you are opening your company to the public for sale of shares of stock, then they are interested into the financial health of your business, of your company. So that's it. The creditors, the owners themselves, the managers, so they could make decisions, the public, the government, and everyone who is interested in your company. Okay? So now... What is, by the way, an, a financial statement analysis? Okay, when we say analysis or financial statement analysis, it means a review or a, a what's this? They conduct, a, they conduct an evaluation. Okay, so they conduct an evaluation, a review of your performance in the past, in the present, and in the future. So, do you think this company has a chance of growing big in the future? Or, so that's it, the future prospects. And also, they would want to see the financial capability, the financial health, the financial stability, the liquidity, solvency, and everything. Okay? So that when we know all these answers to these questions, the, the, the users of the financial statements can make wise decisions, okay? Especially economic decisions. And now we will study about the, okay, what the, we have already mentioned, the financial statements that is being used or the financial statements that are being used in the study or in the evaluation. Primarily, they are the balance sheet, income statement, cash flow, and the statement of changes in owner's equity. They would use these financial statements and what type of financial statements? Preferably, it must be audited. 
it must be audited by external auditors so that the financial statements that they are using are fair and and was this correct and they followed the the generally accepted accounting principles okay so that's it now we will dwell into the types of analysis that we do we have the horizontal the vertical and the financial ratios but for today we will dwell on the horizontal analysis and the vertical analysis okay. so what do you mean by horizontal analysis okay when we say horizontal analysis okay i have written here well this is like my code horizontal means um you compare for example in my given example in this in this in this uh powerpoint presentation is the sales data i want to see if the sales sales performance of the company is doing good so i will have two years i will compare the previous year which is 2014 and i will compare it to the current year which is 2015 that is why i wrote there two i compare two years okay and you use two columns the you use two columns that is why uh h2o well that's only my for my own code and the formula is how do you get the peso change you get the current year, which is 3,175,000, deduct it from the previous year, which is 2,280,000, and it will give us how much? A change, a peso change of 895,000. So from the 895,000, you divide it to the previous year. So the previous year sales is 2,280,000, and it will give us the percentage change. So the percentage change is 39.25%. So let's interpret it now. The analysis is that is an increase in sales of 39.25%. So when you try to interpret it, you will see what brought the sales, okay? What brought the increase in sales? Maybe later when you have already when you are already provided with all the economic uh, no, financial data, then you can make further interpretation and analysis. Okay. So when we say horizontal analysis, it is also known as the trend analysis. Okay. The purpose of the trend analysis or the horizontal analysis is to check whether there is a what? An increase or a decrease? An increase or a decrease? Where is it? Decrease or no change at all. Okay? So we are looking at the increase, decrease, increase, decrease in the account of the, in, in the account in the financial statement and we get the peso change then the percentage change. Okay? So here, you will notice that the sales, okay, we compare the sales from 2018 to 2019 so with the other accounts when a uh, cost of goods sold we compare it from 2018 to 2019 so you compare the same accounts the same cost of goods sold accounts using different years the previous year and the current year you call it also the trend analysis okay we are using here the simple simple uh what's this the year you call it the the year on year growth okay the year on year growth for our purpose in senior high school we will be studying only the year on year growth but then in college you will be using the compounded annual growth increase or decrease okay compounded annual growth rate okay so now we have the if you will also notice in your horizontal analysis, there is a comparison between two columns. These two columns are the one, the previous year and the current year. And you compare one type of account with the same type of account on different dates, on different years. Okay, so that is the, that is the 
characteristic of horizontal analysis. Now, in vertical analysis, well, in the vertical analysis, you compare. This is only uh, for one year. If in the horizontal analysis, we have two years, here in the vertical analysis, we compare only the different accounts for one year. In vertical analysis, we use the common size analysis or the common size financial statements to make common size analysis. Why common size? Because we compare one account, for example, here in the sales, cost of goods, gross profit, operating, net income. We compare all these accounts to the sales. So your sales becomes the base. Okay? So the cost of goods sold of 1,800,000, yes, is it 1,800,000? Yes. The 1,800,000 is compared to the base of 3 million. So 1 million divided by 3 million will give us, is that 80%? Yes, that's 80%. Okay, so the base in the income statement, you use the sales as the base. Well, in the balance sheet, you use the total assets as your base. Okay, so um, again, let me repeat, you get the, you get you get the vertical analysis on a one year one year base one year base with sales as your base and in the asset you use your total asset as your base okay so this is called vertical because you use only one column while in the horizontal you use in the horizontal you use two columns or two years in the vertical analysis, you use only one, one year, okay? And you compare one asset to the total assets. The cash compared to the total assets, the accounts receivable compared to the total assets, etc. So if you will try to analyze and interpret this data that we have taken, so it shows here that the cost of goods sold is 80% of the sales. And the Yes, 80%. And your gross profit is 40% of the sales. So that means for every peso sale, 40 centavos goes to your prof gross profit. Okay? And then the operating expense is 17%. Okay? So 17% of the sales is your operating expense and your net income is 24%. So meaning... For every uh, peso income, you gain 24% as your clean net income or 24 centavos as your net income. Okay, so with the uh, accounts in the total assets, you compare everything to the total assets. You compare your assets, 60% is, is, your, uh, is your cash. So that means the composition of your total assets is... Uh, asset, uh, no, cash has the largest percentage. It is 60% of the assets is your cash. And the lowest percentage is the prepaid rent. That is only how much? 5%. Okay? So it tells us that 5% or the lowest composition of your asset is your prepaid rent, which is 5%. Okay? So we compare it only to one year. So vertical, one year alone one year now let's have now this is your assignment okay let's have an activity eight let's try performing the vertical and horizontal analysis following the example i have given above okay so i think this is now very easy for you because of the examples i have given okay thank you very much for watching see you again on our next topic which is the financial ratios okay again I am at your service, ABM with Teacher John. God bless everyone.